Hello Motor Rider World fans and welcome to Paddock Talk MotoGP Red Bull Ring Saturday Review. Um, and after the threatening weather, it looked like it was going to rain at many times during during the day. Those those clouds just came over the Spielberg Mountains there in the Styrian Mountains. And you kind of just thought, oh God, it's, it's going to rain. It threatened with a couple of drops uh, once or twice, but there was no real rain uh, ever. So it stayed nice and clear. It actually got really hot at one stage. There was a bit of a breeze, so that did make it uh, a little bit more bearable. But uh, a very hot day of of riding out in um, in Spielberg on and off track in MotoGP. It was what a, what another spectacular day. Great day qualifying. FP4 threw up a lot of surprises. Uh, we saw the struggles, of course, of our very own Brad Binder. He had some technical issues with his machine that really hampered his FP4, and it kind of carried on into into the qualifying. He did get straight into Q2, which was a great thing, but sadly one or two gremlins there really did hamper his full charge, his full go. Um, at trying to get as high up on the grid as possible. Nevertheless, he will start in 12th, put in a decent time, a 129.5, only 0.7 off, okay, only 0.7 in MotoGP terms these days is quite a bit, but 0.7 off um, top spot, which went to a neighbor, Shanini, and Brad has come out and said, uh, he, you know, he's got a little cheeky smile about himself for Sunday. We know he is the Sunday man. There is a 40% chance it's going to rain um, in the Styrian Mountains tomorrow, Sunday race day. So let's see what happens. And if, if it is... Um, uh, you know, a wet race is Brad can just stay out on slicks and win the race again. <clears throat> it, was, it certainly brought a lot of excitement last year, we know that, but um, yeah, let's see what happens. I think it's going to be a great race day. I really do think it's going to be a great race day. There's so many things that are going to throw up. Um, looking at the grid, it is Anaya Bastianini, push like a bastard, the man, the beast. What a, what a ride there from him. Looks a little bit more relaxed now. Uh, I don't still no word on the decision whether him or Martin are taking the full factory ride, but Bastianini this weekend just looks like a rider that's sewn up his contract, whatever he's doing, whether it's Pramac or the factory deal, it looks like that deal is done and he's riding with a little bit more uh, freedom, a little bit less stress than he has while, you know, uh, Ducati were making this decision. I said it all along, Ducati didn't really manage that whole situation well in my mind, putting Martin and Bastianini up against each other really did mess with their heads a little bit, but they both seem to be back on track and a brilliant performance by Anaya Bastianini to put it on pole position for the Grissini Ducati team. I think he's going to be a big threat. We know um, he can win races. He, he's done it three times already this year. We know how well he can manage races. So he's going to be a big threat on that Ducati. A Ducati with a rider like Bastianini and his, um, his race craft around Red Bull Ring, it's going, to, it's, it's going to be a tough call getting ahead of the beast. It all depends on the start though. That start is going to be so vital, especially now with that new chicane. I am heading myself, once I've sorted Daz out, got him comfortable and he heads out, I am heading straight to Service Road, straight to that chicane, because I want to see what's going to happen. Um, in fact, for all the races, I'm going to head straight there, because I th all those riders coming out of Turn 1 and funneling themselves into that chicane, which is very much um, one line, there's, there's one line through there, I think there's going to be a little bit of carnage, I think that we're certainly going to see some riders getting it wrong, going straight, there's, there's going to be something going on in that chicane, so I'm definitely going to go pinpoint myself there, so it's good, it's going to be vital about a start, um, you know, being aggressive but not too aggressive, do you go inside, do you go outside, it really is going to be about managing the start of the race and getting through that chicane unscathed. So Bastianini then on pole position. Pekko Banyaya in second place. And FP4, he was he was so ruthless. He was just he was just hammering those lap times out one after another. And then he had that front end tuck, that fast crash. And you kind of thought, oh, you know, what's this going to do to Pekko? We've seen these kind of mistakes come out of Pekko before. And, the, you know, that's that's the one chink in his armor that he's got. He's... He's got that crash in him, it seems, these days, and it, it comes out to play, but recovered perfectly. Hats off Peko Banyaya. He climbed straight back on the bike, ready for qualifying, and again, just hammered out some fast lap times. Didn't look like it fussed him at all, and put it on second um, on the grid. And what, 0.24 of a second or something, separating the two at the top. I mean, it's just ridiculous how fast these riders are. Standing on the, side, on the service road and watching, that turn one is such a brutal corner because you're coming so hard on the brakes and then the, the turn invites you in but the exit just closes so you can just see these riders just wrestling these motor gp bikes standing on the pegs darren's boots are like soaked after every session it's like he's ridden a rain he's raced in the rain and 
I put them on, he, we've like modified his, his, one of his helmet dryers to kind of dry his boots. And he's like, why are my boots sweating so much? And I was like, dude, it's because I watch you. All you guys do is stand on the pegs and climb over the front. And you always moving on that racetrack. It is so physical. And, you know, a lot of the riders saying, even under hard braking, you, it's on your shoulders, it's on your legs, it's on your back, it's on your neck. It's on your feet. It, you really, the, the riders get pushed to the absolute limit. Riders and machine get pushed to the absolute limit at the, the beautiful Red Bull Ring. Again, I said, uh, you know, going there for the first time, the best place that I've been to, certainly the best MotoGP I've been to. That track, the attention to detail that Red Bull and Spielberg put into that Red Bull Ring is just flawless. It is from the media center to the space in both paddocks, paddock one and two, um, just everything is just so meticulous and finished to perfection. And watching MotoGP bikes just get around there at the speeds they do is just a fantastic, fantastic sight. So I cannot wait for, for Sunday's race day. I cannot, cannot wait. Jack Miller, oh man, you can't help but think what Ducati were thinking letting this guy go because he's just a showman on and off the track. He's He's stuck with the fans is going up. You know, I love the fact that the Jack Milling, the Jack Miller Hoonigan riding kind of guy is back. Fans absolutely adore him, scream his name uh, at every single chance. And Ducati are losing a very big asset. The KTM are gaining an asset. It's going to be so interesting to see how that works out with, with Jack Miller loving life and, and, and performing well on a very good Ducati, climbing onto this inconsistent KTM. And it's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, for Jack Millen. I think it's going to be a good exercise for KTM, for Brad in particular. You know, if a Jack comes from a winning Ducati on the podium more often than not, challenging for race wins and struggles on the KTM, you know, what's that going to do for Brad's thought process of, of staying with KTM? If Jack comes and outperforms Brad, what's that going to do for Brad's thought process? So there's a lot going on with that Jack Miller move. It's it really is going to be, um, a lot of people are going to keep a big eye on that. Certainly, I'm going to be one of those to see how that all plays out. Then it was Jorge Martin uh, um, starting up the second row. Watch out for him. We know the Martinator. We know what he did last year. He was able to win there. We know he's got the pace. We know he's not shy of getting those elbows out. And he can also just be ruthless and relentless. So another big tip. Fabio Quattararo, the first of the non-Italian uh, bikes, um, breaking up the, the Ducati party at the front there. He's just behind Martin in fifth place. And my only concern with Fabio, is he's, he's riding that Yamaha to the absolute limit. And when you're doing that every single lap, every single race meeting, you know, we saw a chink in the armor at Assen with that mistake. We saw at Silverstone, certainly uh, the struggles were there. You know, how much longer can he push to the absolute limit and get away with it? While Pecco and them are coming. You know, Pekko Panyaya, we counted him out of the championship. He's only 50 points behind. Championship is very much open. Alasia Spargo, Silverstone didn't go his way. You know, very much a damage limitation game there. Didn't lose too much on, on Fabio, but he's not quite on the pace with the rest of the field this weekend. Although I do think both he and Maverick are good options for certainly top five, potentially podium as well. But it's going to be hard to beat those Ducatis. But for Fabio to put that in fifth place, you know, listening to Simon Crafar in his commentary, he's like, it is. It's it's a heroic effort, but how long can you continue riding at 110% for every single lap before breaking point, you know, hits? So Fabio's going to have a big challenge on his hands, a big, big, big challenge. Um, I certainly think turn one and the chicane leaning into turn three helps him. It'll maybe line him up, able to to potentially make a move. But then, you know, when it gets to horsepower city, Fabio Quattararo has just got to just got to pray and somehow keep those Ducatis and Aprilias behind him. So let's see what, what Fabio Quattararo, how he manages this race, because it's really him against the Ducati world at the moment. He's just ganged up by Ducati and Italian machines, um, European machines. Behind him, Zarco. Zarco, you know, looked really good the whole weekend. Couldn't quite um, replicate his pace from certainly on Friday. Uh, we saw the, the challenges. That, that Alasia Spargo, I think it was free practice, three or four, where he came down the straight and he shaved past Zarco. Um, yeah, I think it was a little bit naughty from, from, from Espargaro because Zarco, he was kind of gesturing to Zarco, you should have been more over. Zarco was completely on the right-hand side, right on the white line. Maybe Zarco should have seen him coming and not, you know, gone out as fast. You, I, I look at it and I think Aleish was, he, he meant to go past him that close to try and, you know, teach him a lesson, say, get out of the way. But that could have ended Horribly. I mean, 
oof, when I watch that on board of Zarko and how close Aleish comes past and Zarko's ma- arm still moves, that, that was a scary moment. And like I said, I think a little bit of na- naughty there from uh, Aleish Spargo. Um, but yeah, Zarko behind him is Vinales. I think, watch out for Vinales. He looks so happy with Maverick Vinales. He really does look like a, a rider reborn now. Um, if you think a year ago to, to Red Bull Ring and where it all went horribly wrong for Maverick, how he's turned it around. And it, it's great to see because... Yeah, a, a happy Maverick Vinales is a fast one, as I've, I've spoken about. So watch out for him. I think he's a good contender. You know, again, it's those first couple of laps that you worry about, but Silverstone proved he's got the pace throughout the whole race. Racecraft is right there, and I think he's going to be a good tip for top five, potentially top three. Jean Mir, we know he loves Red Bull Ring um, on the Suzuki. A little bit further back there, he's going to, again, have, have struggles. I think they'll have good overall race pace. Another top contender for top... Everyone's a top contender for top five and top three, it looks like. Uh, but good to see the Suzuki up there. Behind him, Malaysia Spargo, like I said, looks like he's on the limit and not quite on the pace for the top three. But anything can happen on, on race day Sunday, especially with those Aprilias that look after their tyres and the, the kind of form that uh, Alicia's in uh, this season. DJ Antonio, another great effort there from, from the Grassini rider. I really am becoming a big fan of DJ Antonio, both on and off the track. And hats off to him. I was one of his doubters at the beginning of the year. Good job, DG. Well done. Uh, right up in the mix there ahead of Alex Rins and then Brad Binder in 12th like I said lap time 29.5 Brad I think he had a little bit more in the pocket but we really did have some some gremlins in FP4 and the start of, of Q2 so managed to get the best uh, uh, out of a tough situation there but I think he's got something for Sunday top speed wise he was really good in FP3 I think set the fastest uh, top speed 315 k's an hour so the speed's there we know how good he is on the brakes we know he, he's not afraid to pass so yeah, watch out, watch out for Brad Binder on the KTM. It'll be another heroic effort if he can put himself in the mix for the podium and the win at the Red Bull Ring in front of all those adoring KTM fans painting the Red Bull Ring orange. Um, another big talking point of the weekend, Mark Marquez coming in to kind of um, assist Honda with their struggles. Uh, I, I enjoyed his press conference where he came out and said, it's not the bike, it's the project that's failing. Uh, there was a nice bit of honesty from there. I think Mark Marquez is the only one who could be that honest with Honda. We we saw what happened to Valentino Rossi when he tried to be honest with Honda many years ago. Um, they wouldn't let him and he left. So it's good to have Mark Marquez in the paddock. He's certainly smiling and looking a lot happier. We'll know his return date hopefully this next week. Um, but yeah, MotoGP needs Marquez. So hopefully we'll see him back on track. So far, his um his attendance which i think is also you know being red bull ring mark mark is one of the top red bull athletes i think that also kind of just enticed him to come if you go into the red bull ring um shop you see all the ktm stuff and red bull ring stuff and then there's mark marquez stuff for sale in that shop as well so i think it was also you know just come to the race do a little bit of pr on that for us and assist honda at the same time and so far the assistance isn't going that well because paulus bargra and his brother alex marquez who crashed in q1 is stone last so um yeah but it was great to see mark marquez back in the paddock and smiling certainly uh, big news um exceptional press conference that took place the sprint races have been announced so um, we'll delve into that on uh, Talking Motor GP live on Facebook Wednesday night from 8 p.m. South African time. We'll really climb into that because that's going to be a big topic of discussion. You'll see on the Motor Rider World page, I literally put the whole press release there from the MotorGP.com website. It really does explain everything. But kind of similar to World Superbikes, um, the sprint race that goes in there, but it doesn't count for qualifying. So in World Superbikes, where you kind of finishing your top nine in the sprint race is the top nine of qualifying. That's the only real difference with the MotoGP sprint race. But like I said, tune in Wednesday night, live from 8 p.m. We'll delve into the sprint race saga, the pros and the cons of it. Certainly, I've I've picked the brains of a lot of, a couple of the team owners and managers and sponsors. And I, you know, I can understand both sides. So it's going to be a nice topic of, of conversation there. Um, then Darren, a great day for Darren. I, th- I think a great day. He improved every time he went out. Touch wood, no mistakes, no big mistakes coming from him yet. Although on his final fast lap in, in Q1, he'd done his best first sector, point two off, and then just um, got it wrong on the brakes going into turn four and had to uh, just lose all that momentum and run off track and that put pay to his qualifying. But again, ahead of MotoGP World Champion Remy Gardner, ahead of of the man that looks like he's replacing him at the RNF team, Ralph Fernandez, again, ahead of Stefan Bradl on the factory Repsol Honda with all those experience, former Moto2 world champion, ahead of Alex Marquez. So, top job by Darren Bender. He's excited. He's going to get a good start, get through that chicane, 
and Darren's going to be right in the mix. It was it was so funny. I was speaking to him. He had him and Dovi had like a um, a ride a meet and greet at the RNF hospitality afterwards. And someone asked Dovi, so how do you think Darren's race is going to go? And Dovi said, well, he's going to f off at the start of the race in front of me, and then I'm going to spend most of the race trying to catch him and pass him. And that's pretty much how the script goes. And it was it was it's good to hear that Dovi's got a sense of humour. Like I said, weight's been lifted off his shoulders. He looks like a happier man now that the decision has been made. San Marino GP in a couple of weeks' time will be his last before being replaced by Cal Crutchlow. Um, so yeah, Darren, I, I was impressed with Daz. Again, another massive learning curve coming from Moto3 to MotoGP. First time on the big bike at Red Bull Ring, one of the scariest, fastest tracks, most uh, physically demanding tracks, certainly. And to finish 1.5 seconds off um, the fastest time, or 1.7 overall, is, is a great job, fantastic job. So look forward to some more improvements from Darren on race day Sunday. That's it for now then. Another great day in Spielberg on Saturday. Look forward to race day and I'll try and put up my um, my race day Sunday report, paddock talk, uh, as early as possible. Just literally got back to the hotel room now. It, it gets busy down in the paddock there. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please, re- please remember to like, uh, subscribe to our channel and share this as far as wide as possible. And I'll catch up with you on Sunday. And then it's Talking MotoGP Wednesday night. We've got a lot to talk about. Catch you then.